the prophet Elijah and his encounter with the prophets of Baal became a prophetic picture given by God to us to unveil the mystery of how he was going to work among his people with his Holy Spirit. And that fulfillment began in the first century with John the Baptist, the Elijah, which was to come as Yeshua said himself. But what does Elijah's story have to tell us about what God is doing in this day? Because I want to submit to you that he is fulfilling it right before our eyes. First, we need to ask, why did John the Baptist come? Well, John said that I have come to baptize in water of repentance. But there is one who is mightier than I, of whom I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. And he will come to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Now, when he is talking in this way in Matthew 3, verse 11, he is alluding to 1 Kings 18, an encounter that Elijah had with the prophets of Baal. And what we see is that Elijah comes to the prophets of Baal and he tells them to build an altar and that he would also then build an altar to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And we see that Elijah takes water and he immerses the offering with the water, something that is kind of strange, because if you're about to light a fire on an offering, the last thing you would probably want to do is pour water all over it. Have you ever tried to light wet wood on fire? OK, so that's what he's doing. But I want to submit to you that just as Elijah was pouring water all over this offering and then eventually God comes with fire from heaven, immersing this offering now with fire, causing everyone to say, this is God. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. This is who he is. This is the one whom we should worship. So in the same way, John the Baptist prepared the way. See, because what what we see Elijah really do is he's preparing the way for God to bring fire by pouring water on the altar. John the Baptist comes and pours water on people, immersing them in water in preparation for Yeshua, who will come to baptize them in the Holy Spirit and in fire. There's something that this has to teach us about who Yeshua is and his divinity, that if the baptizer in fire in the story of Elijah was our father who is in heaven, who is the baptizer in fire today? Who is the baptizer in fire that John the Baptist was preparing the way for? Is it not God who has come down and tabernacled? among men. Secondly, what it means is that when Elijah was pouring water on the offering and that the fire came on an offering, John the Baptist, when he was baptizing people in water, they were the offering to which the Messiah would then baptize in the Holy Spirit in fire. And this is also alluded to in 1 Kings 18.31. It says Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And he said, fill four jars of water, pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So we see that Elijah is building the altar with 12 stones, which is representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And he also asks them to pour 12 jars of water upon this altar. In other words, every tribe has a jar of water designated to it, that God's heart is to immerse every tribe 
in water. And then there's an expectation for the fire of God to come upon every tribe. Because, see, we being understood to be offerings to God that John the Baptist is presenting to the Father and that Yeshua is bringing fire upon, that now calls responsibility to us. Because we then see in the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offerings and the wood and stones and the dust and licked up the water that was on the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. If the true altar, the true offering is believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, then it means that the fire of God is expected to fall upon believers. And it is by that spirit of God, which is the fire of God, that others in this world will see us and cry out and say, who is this God that does this in this person? I want to follow this God. We are supposed to be the demonstration of his miraculous supernatural power to change us and to work miraculously through us. In fact, it is in this deal between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. It is the fact that the fire came from heaven that made Yahweh who he was, that made the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob known. If Elijah poured all the water on the altar and it was just left at that, everyone would just be kind of like, OK, that's crazy. Nothing is happening. There's nothing special. But because the fire came down, He made himself known. And in that way, he makes himself known when his fire comes upon us. And when we are an offering that is on fire, an offering that is a demonstration of the spirit of God. That's why Paul said that I have come to understand that it must be that my preaching must be by a demonstration of the spirit and in power so that your faith would not be just in men and what I say, but in the power of God. And so the fire is what makes Yahweh who he is and different from the false gods. If your religion, even in God, is one that does not have the Holy Spirit demonstrated, then how is your religion different from that of Islam or any of the other religions of this world? See, it should be strange, absolutely mind boggling strange. If the fire of God does not come upon your vessel, yet you declare that you're a follower of the Messiah, it should be absolutely mind boggling crazy if you say that I believe in Jesus, but you don't walk as he walked and do the things that he said that you will do the things that I have done and greater things than these. He gave us gifts of the Holy Spirit. Go and read them. (laughs) He gave those to us and those are expected to be made manifest in and through us. And so the question is, is do you have fire on your altar? Are you actually burning for him? Are you actually a light that when people look at you, they see Yeshua in and through you, through your kindness, your fruits of the spirit, your love, your sacrificial heart, your turning of the other cheek when you're done wrong. The fact that you take off your jacket and give it to your enemy. Are you demonstrating that to people so they can recognize whom you are a servant of? And if you're wondering, well, then the second question is, is have you prepared your altar for the fire to come down? Because the way that you are prepared is the way that Elijah prepared the altar, the way that John the Baptist prepared the altar. They prepared it by an immersion of water, pouring water on the altar and baptizing people into waters of repentance. You need to be baptized into waters of repentance, calling on his name. But you also need that also means you need to take a step of faith that we need to do our part. We need to pour water on the altar and then God comes and pours fire on the altar. But that means that we must step out. We must believe we must step out in faith. Elijah, when he poured out water on the altar, that was a huge step of faith because he had to believe that despite that wood being as wet as it was, somehow the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is going to come and he is going to pour out fire on this and it's going to burn. 
Like that's an immense step of faith. And that is what we, if we're believers in him, that is what is required of us to, uh, to have, to be, to have altars that are receiving far from heaven. Otherwise, if we don't step out and believe and ask of him to put far on our altar, then we're not really a people of faith anymore. And to add to that, that offering that Elijah had there that was so wet with water was least likely to ever catch fire compared to the altar of the pagans who did not do the same. But yet that altar, that sacrifice that was least likely to catch fire was the very one who caught fire. And that's what happened in the first century, because when John the Baptist came on the scene, He prepared the way for the baptizer of fire for Yeshua by baptizing people in water. But the type of people he baptized in water were also the least likely type of altar, the least likely type of offering to present to the Messiah. They weren't the the leaders of the day. In fact, the spiritual leaders persecuted John the Baptist and said that he has a demon. And similarly, when Yeshua then came, he baptized in fire those who were the least of this world, those who were the sinners, the tax collectors, those who were the least likely type of offerings who became the most on fire types of offerings for God. The disciples who are mere fishermen, but raised up as weapons in his hand, a burning sacrifice that burned to this very day. And so I want to submit to you that in the first century, this is why it was that the certain Pharisees who were the leaders of the day, they needed to make an appointment with Yeshua as Nicodemus made an appointment with Yeshua. But Yeshua, my Jesus, made appointments with the least, with the sinners and tax collectors. He went after them. And so that's why right now he's going after you. He's drawing your heart and he's saying you may feel like the least. You may feel like that you don't have the world running, the world cheering for you. You may feel like you're the least in this world. You may feel like you've been cast aside. You may feel like you don't have a lot to offer, but he is coming to you and he is saying, come to me and drink of me and I will make you a river of living water. And not only that, I will pour out my spirit upon you. And I will equip you and make you strong in me and I will put fire upon you and everyone will see that you're my servant, that I have sent you and you will go out and be a witness to the nations, preparing the way for the second coming. And so now, just as John the Baptist prepared the way for the first coming of Christ, what if I told you that you, you are called to prepare the way for his second coming? So what are you waiting for? The world is looking. They're, they just want a taste of him. Give them a taste of your Messiah, and then they will come in and see him for who he is. And so I'll conclude with what Elijah himself said. 1 Kings eighteen twenty one. And Elijah came nearer to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. Today, God is calling you to make a decision to leave your double mindedness, but to make a commitment to become his servant on fire for him. The people were divided in their minds. They were double minded. They could not make up their mind as to whom they will serve. Whom will you serve? And when will you stop being double minded about what God has called you to be? It is time to commit to the call of God. It is time to pick up your cross with everything you have and follow him, never looking back at your sins, never looking back at your past, but looking forward to him for who he is so that everyone else around you may also look where you are looking. Father, I pray for everyone listening to this right now who may be double minded, unsure, and who may not have fully committed their faith. They may have said one thing, but not have followed through. Father, right now, Lord, we come to you and we ask, Father, that you would have your perfect way. We surrender our lives to you all over. We surrender our mouths, our ears, our eyes, our feet, our hands. We ask that you would use us as your instruments. Here we are, Lord, send us, cleanse us and make us like you. The name of Yeshua. Amen. 
I want to say a special thank you to all of our partners who've made this teaching possible. Love you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Shalom. Mm-hmm.